Great to have you with us, Adam. Can you just share where you were with your hockey as a 12-year-old? Uh, yeah, so at 12 years, years old, I was, um, I think I joined my first hockey club, Bromley and Beckenham, um, just playing there, kind of just like enjoying the sport. Um, I didn't have school at hockey, so that was kind of the main hockey I got at the club. But yeah, I was just enjoying it, I just like was going with it. Did you have, were you like playing other sports at the same time as well? Not really, like my whole life I've never really played, like, I never like joined another club really, like I did a little bit of cricket maybe, and like I enjoyed playing other sports, but not like, never joined a club, like in PE and stuff, I've always enjoyed playing other sports, like volleyball, stuff like that, but never like played them competitively at all really. Mm. So like what did hockey mean to you at that time? Um, to be honest, I just really enjoyed it from primary school, like I had a really good coach and just, he made me just really enjoy it, so like at that age, didn't really think much of it, it was just kind of a place where like, I'd meet friends, go play some sport, get like all my energy out, I just kind of loved running about, so I had to do something. And that was just like the way I found that I just enjoyed it most. So I kind of just like kept going with it. And do you remember like your first county trial? Uh, God, that's a while ago. Yeah, I do kind of remember it. Um, yeah, I, I went to play for Ken. Um, I remember being like a lot of kids and like, because I wasn't really used to playing with like people like really good standards. It was the first time where like, everyone was very good. And then also there was people from like, like a wide variety of places. Um, being like very nervous, not really knowing like what the future is. I didn't really know like what this means, like what could progress. Um, but again, I kind of had just the mindset of just go run really hard, do whatever, have a go, see how it goes. So yeah. And then did, how long did you get into Kent the first time you tried out? Or? Yeah, I think I got into Kent the first year. Um, God, I must be under 14s possibly. Um, I don't think there was any like progression from there. I don't think it was JP. Um, like the JRPC stuff. And then, yeah, wow. like the next year I got in again. And then I think, yeah, that kind of progressed that year. And, like, do you remember your first JRPC? Yeah. Um, JRPC was really good when I started off. Uh, again, like, a lot of really good kids. Um, we had some good coaches. And, like, it was, first, like, really professional kind of hockey camp I'd been on. Mm. Um, like, they give you all the kit. Um, they kind of plan out a whole day of, like, two sessions. Um, I just thought, yeah, it was very professional and, and like, you, everyone gets, like, that England hockey top, so it's quite cool and everyone's, like, excited. So, yeah, it was, it was good fun. It was always in the summer as well. I remember it always being sunny and, like, fun. Had you ever, like, been to other, like, hockey camps or done, like, one-to-one -one coaching before that? Or was that the sort of first time you'd been on a hockey camp? Yeah, I really, I really didn't do much of that stuff. Um, I know there's quite a few of them in, like, London now. Um, but, yeah, I didn't really do any hockey camps except for, like, just literally just club hockey. Um, I never did like any one-on-one -on -one stuff, so yeah, it was quite exciting. And then, um, how did it go in your first year at JRPC? Did you get like selected for a tournament? Did you get to high pack? Yeah, I think it must be when I was lower year of under sixteen. So that yeah, be... under fifteen. Yeah, yeah, that was when um, yeah we did JRPC it was good, um, and then got into high pack. Um, and that was when, I don't know if there still is high pack now, but that was when, you know, you, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't as a young person push up and go to Futures Cup, you'd do high pack. Yeah. And then I think every year, like four or five um, of the young kids got brought up to like uh, the under 16 in England squad. Um, and that was kind of how it happened. And yeah, I remember that high pack. It was quite funny. My first ever coach actually was like my assistant coach. And I just remember being like, have such like a positive mindset and have such good fun um and that was like yeah obviously that was the highest standard I played at everyone was really good um and you're playing like competitively against other teams um I remember just literally just running around like doing as much as possible just trying to tackle everyone just doing everything um and I, I ended up getting picked for that which was a big shock to us I didn't really know like what the English system was didn't really like know much about it um, and then also one of my good mates who I was in high pack with, who I'm still like friends with now, got in as well, which was really nice because like when we went to those camps, we used to like share lifts. So it was just nice having someone like who I knew there. Um, so that was really oh. exciting. Yeah. Was, it, was it quite overwhelming going to high pack? So when you barely, you know, you obviously done JRPC, but you haven't really been away or been on hockey camps. Especially yeah. Have you sort of been away from home like that? Or? Yeah, true. I suppose it was. Um, I don't know, just looking back on it, I never really thought of it as, like, a very scary, like, daunting place. I remember just having such a good, like, 
I don't know how it came about with just such a good mindset of just like just go have fun. I think I like had quite a few friends in the team, which just made it easier. It kind of just felt like a bit of fun. Um, and then when it came to the games and stuff, like we all were really excited just to like win and like do well. So it kind of just like happened like that. Sure. And then you, you got the England and the 16 call up uh, a year young. Yeah. But obviously you don't get in straight away, do you? You still sort of have to do a yeah you know, standard trial period. Just can you just talk us through your first session? Um, God, yeah, I can't. You can oh, remember. <laughs> I don't remember to remember that, but I remember I think kind of you get picked in September and that September to Christmas is just training and that's where yeah. they cut down the squad. Yeah. Uh, and there's no games there. So that was quite tough. Um I was like way out of my depth. Like I think I had a good high pack tournament, but like it's just like the amount of hockey I had under my belt, it's just like what like I just felt like quite out of depth. But kind of just kept going with it and like it was difficult because I like was getting, you know, beaten up, getting like got past and everything. But like it just makes you a lot better. And at the end of the day, like that is, you know, putting yourself in this uncomfortable position is how you're gonna get better. So um yeah, just kept going with it. And I think I actually made it through that kind of Christmas cut which was good um and I ended up like not playing any of the games in summer but the amount of training I got for that whole year was just so like valuable I think um yeah yeah so it sort of brought you in for development I suppose and yeah yeah and it was really good it made the next year a lot easier because obviously I'd like been there know the process like knew a lot of people um so yeah and how did you um what was your club hockey looking like at this point did you started to play like for men's teams and yeah I think yeah, so I started playing men's hockey at Brombex quite early for the twos, um, like really early actually. And it was, yeah, I just found it so good because you're just getting boshed up by these big men. It just makes you so much stronger and so much more like value kind of your possession and stuff. Um, but then actually, I think it was that second year of 16s, possibly, or the year after I moved club to Serpton, where I'm at now. Um and then I also moved to school for six from to week gift. Like, it was quite a big decision. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that in more depth um, a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. But just first, we'll just talk us through your second 16s year. Okay, yeah. That um, before that, wasn't it? Before you sort of yeah. made some big decisions. Yeah, I made it a lot easier because um, I'd done it before, like knowing the coaches and stuff. Um, I knew a few people. Uh, and it was really enjoyable because then at that point, everyone was my age. I didn't really know the people older. Um, and now they're all on my age. Um, and yeah, I find it a lot of fun. And that was when I started playing games. And obviously, like, I remember from the first game again, went to Holland. I literally remember, like, being on the pitch. And it was just crazy, like, just, like, what that was. Um, and had a really good summer. Enjoyed it. Again, like, it was tough. Like, I don't think I was, like, the best there by far, by any means. But, like, it just doing all that training with really good people. Just, again, just keep getting better, keep progressing. Um, but, yeah, I enjoyed it. I think that was amazing. And what was your like mindset by to hockey by this point? Had it shifted from when you were twelve? Were you taking it more seriously, or um, I don't really know. I, like it's not again. Like, I don't really think it's like like a specific shift or like thinking like oh this is it now. Like I don't know. Like at the end of the day, I was just was still just enjoying hockey as much as I was when I was like twelve. Just keep like I just loved running about and just loved just tackling and passing and just getting ahead and running and all that stuff. So. I kind of just was enjoying it, um, didn't really think much about it. Um, yeah, so I, I don't really know what to say to that, probably just kind of similar. similar sure, answer. yeah, I sort of just, just kept going, it was just sort of similar yeah. mindset. Just to, it kind of just like all was it. happening, I was just kind of like going with the flow. Sure. So, and then like, um, did you play in like the Six Nations in that 16 year? Yeah, I did. Um, it's quite, yeah, it was a weird story. I basically, like, remember not getting picked for the Six Nations, but I, like, I got picked for the series, didn't get picked for the Six Nations. I found out like on my, my birthday. I remember just being like so like upset, but like it was a good thing. Like I just remember like thinking, damn it, like that was tough. But like, that was kind of the first time where like you really felt that kind of stuff. Mm. And then we had a series against Belgium just before it and someone got an injury and actually had a really good series against Belgium, played really well and then ended up going. Um, so I just think like, yeah, I don't know what to say about that, but just like things kind of happen for a reason. And like when you get chances, you've got to take them. And if not, you've got to learn, learn from mistakes, learn from stuff. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, sort of took your opportunity and yeah. how did the Six Nations go? Do you remember? Yeah, it was, uh, we didn't do that well. I remember that. 
Well, we did decently. We didn't do that well because um, it was the Six Nations. It wasn't really the, uh, there wasn't like a, it wasn't like a Euros. So there wasn't like proper medals and stuff. So it was very just, you know, play everyone once. But we played it. I don't know where we played. Was it Belgium or Holland? And we, we were in this like crappy hotel. It was so bad. <laughs> I just remember that. The hotel was being horrendous. Like to get Wi-Fi, you have to like hug the wall just because it would literally cut like halfway in our room. Um but then that tournament was really fun and the, the clubhouse we were playing, I don't know where we were playing, it was so nice. And like pretty much everyone's family came to visit. So it was just really, really nice. And yeah, that was just like a crazy first experience of kind of real, real international hockey. I mean, obviously you've done, um, you know, really well. I'm a England set up, you're playing for Bombex Mans. Can you just talk us through the you know, opportunities which started to open up for you with your um, school, school hockey first and then also club hockey? Yeah. Um, pretty much kind of like I found that um, not doing school hockey was quite tough because I only do hockey like three times a week then um, and club hockey was good like Bromrex is a great club um, compared to like a club like service and other clubs like the where the junior sections are just so big um, like the men's hockey was like great at Bromrex so that was really good for me but like the junior hockey which I was doing at England and stuff I wasn't really exposed to that kind of high level mm. And I don't know, I remember one of my friends who I made at England that first year went to Surbiton um, and that was kind of one of the closer clubs to me. I kind of live more like southeast London and there's not like loads of big hockey clubs near me, but that was kind of one of the closest, more like southwest. And yeah, I just remember like thinking, I was just like, this is quite exciting, this would be good for me. Um, and I went to go talk to like the coaches there. And then just like started training and just like really enjoyed it. And like it was quite a big decision. I remember it took me like an hour and a half to get there. And I was going like two, three times a week. I'd literally get home from school, be starving, eat a little food and then get on the train and just be like revising on the train for an hour and a half. And then <sighs> training back and then back like really late, just being super tired. But like I just kind of like enjoyed it. Um, and was that before you'd moved school then? Was that in year 11? That was the same year. Sorry, my memory's so bad. I think that's the same year where I joined Whitgift and Serviton. Um, but then, yeah, with Whitgift, it was a bit different because I think the coach had been in contact with the kind of coach who first coached me, um, who I kind of live closely back home. And he let me know that, like, they were interested. Um, and there was, like, a scholarship involved. Um, but it was still, like, quite a big decision for my family because, like, none of my... Um, like I went to a state school, but my, both my brothers went to like the same school and kind of did the same thing. And this was kind of a big opportunity. Um, and obviously financially, it was very kind of like big decision. Um, and I remember just thinking like, I went to go visit and like obviously Whitgift is a crazy school with loads of like, compared to my old school, it's just crazy. Like they have flamingos flying about and they've got pools and they've got pitches and stuff. And I was just thinking, uh -huh. yeah, it's crazy. But I don't know what ended up being the decision. I think like me and my mum talked a lot about it and... Yeah, kind of end up just deciding we'd go there and like both decisions. I think like I don't know what like what I'd do if I didn't like didn't decide those, but like I think they're both like good decisions in my life and like really enjoyed it to be honest. How, how do you find um, what gift help you with your hockey? Um, just like the like level of junior hockey there was just crazy. Like we had people like Zach Wallace and then like younger people like Dennis and Waller and like the standard of hockey was just like so high there that like. And because you're like surrounded by these people, you like go into lunchtime, play like good hockey, and then you got club later. Just that that exposure of all that um, was just really good for me. Um, and like, I think you gotta be like a certain type of person to like you know do that much hockey and like find it beneficial. Like some people doing their men's hockey at their club might be best for them. Some just doing school, but like for me in that time, I don't know, it's worked well, and like I kind of was enjoying it. And like yeah, I think yeah, that's kind of how it worked. And then your, how did this stuff um, progress for your England player pathway from uh, year yeah, so, on? So you done a couple of years, 16s. What, what happened yeah. after? So that was good. And then next year is, I think there was another high pack, but then I was moved up to Futures Cup, which was like a decision you could do because either you could try to get through the Futures or you could still do um, high pack and like the select few. But yeah, I went to Futures uh, and we ended up winning that year. We had a really good team, so that was fun. Um, and yeah, I didn't have a good tournament that time. I don't really know what specifically. I think like wasn't as focused maybe. Just didn't I just felt like I didn't really play that well. Um, 
and didn't get selected that year, which was fine because you're, you're you're young, you have like a whole year to progress. Um, so I remember just thinking with that one, I don't know, I was kind of just like, I've got all this stuff going on elsewhere, like I'm just gonna push on with that. And then that year was, I think, I think that year is when I probably like progressed the most in my hockey because mm. I was doing school and I was getting really involved with that, and then club was going well, and that's when I started playing for like the first team. And yeah, playing for the first team at Serbia and training with them was just crazy good for me. And like people, when you do the England system, you actually have like a lot of time doing that and you have less energy kind of committing to this other stuff, which is like can be very beneficial as well. So that year was just, yeah, actually really good for me, um, despite kind of not getting picked for the, the England stuff. And what was it like sort of training with Serbia men's first team at that point? Was it like a big step up? Yeah, I mean, when I first joined the club, I did a training session with them and I was just like, so out of depth I was like what is going on I can't even pass and these guys are doing crazy stuff um but then yeah with, like I think when Mark Pern joined who's like still here and he's like a great coach and really like inclusive and like the youngsters joining in when that kind of happened and that all slotted in mm-hmm. obviously it was like super out of depth and like really difficult but like all of them were really like um inclusive and like happy for you to join and like advice and all that stuff and when you just get stuck in and like really have a go and like really expose yourself and like you know get beaten but then like get back and that all that stuff is actually really good for you so yeah I really enjoyed it that kind of year. Mm. So then, yeah you're sort of developing at school developing with Serbton um, yeah. Like, yeah yeah you had, having a big progression with your hockey and then how did it progress for you the next year in the England hockey stuff? Um, yeah so the next year uh, was like again like my year um and that's when we had like Futures Cup and I think we had school games that summer as well. Um, and that went really well. Um, like we won school games. Um, I'd done like some captain stuff for that as well, which I think was really good for me for like my progression. Um, had a really good tournament um, and then got picked. And I think, I think I just like felt from that Futures Cup to the one before, like how much more confidence I had and how much like better I felt and more, yeah, more confident on the pitch. Um, so that one went like a lot better. And you got into England under 18s. Can you, can you just talk us through that year then for you? Yeah, that was a, a really good year because like that's when I don't know. That's kind of when you're like developing from junior hockey to under 16s to like more like more men's um, men men's hockey, um, and it's really competitive. And that year we had a, a Euro hockey competition, which we were like leading up to, which was really good. Um, and actually, like as a team, I thought we played really well that year, and like I think we did pretty well in Euros. We got a bit unlucky. Um, but yeah, I just remember as a team really progressing that year and like playing together, which was good. Mm. And I, were you starting to feel a bit more comfortable on me? Yeah, yeah. By now. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that's when I was kind of really developing into like a men's hockey player and like really thinking about like what I want to be as a hockey player and like what my thinking about like what really I need to improve on and like really look deeply into that. And then anything like shifted in your mindset towards hockey or were you still sort of going with flow or do you think you were taking it a bit more seriously now? Um, yeah, I think it's become like a bigger part of my life by that mm-hmm. point. Um, still just enjoying it and like keep on going and just I always had that kind of mindset, just keep going, enjoying it. But yeah, I suppose more kind of realizing this is a bigger part of my life. University's coming up, kind of all this stuff, like what I want to do, you know, like I really want to progress this. So just yeah, I suppose I did kind of think about it a little bit more. And how do you balance all your sort of throughout your pathway? in the England stuff, like how did you balance it with um, your like schoolwork and, and also social life? Yeah, it's really difficult. Like I think everyone understands the kind of difficulties with like education and playing like competitive sport. Um, but it's like, it's all doable. And I think the transfer, the transferable skills between, you know, playing competitive hockey and doing well in education is so like valuable. And I think, you know, if you have a good mindset in hockey pitch and you work hard and you take that to the school where you can actually do really well and they kind of work hand in hand. So, yeah, I suppose with work, it's just making sure you time it in. I remember like, I just fit in doing a lot of work in school, like during lunch and during like breaks, um, which was good. Uh, and then, yeah, social life. So I had really good friends and kind of, I mean, I had a lot of friends in hockey as well, which made it easier. Like, I didn't feel like I was going home and had a new set of friends. You know, when I went to camps, I enjoyed, camps, I enjoyed it and I saw people who, who like were my friends. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of balancing that is really important. But I think it, I think it comes more natural than kind of you'd expect for playing that much hockey. Sure, yeah, no, it makes sense. Those transferable skills can be, um, you know, like really invaluable yeah. and make you much more efficient with your 
um, schoolwork. Yeah. And just looking back, is there like one top tip which stands out for junior performance players? With like hockey? Uh, yeah, or, or just like, yeah, maybe performing in hockey or or like the wider of how to balance everything? Yeah. Um, with the hockey, I'd just say, like, just keep enjoying it. Like, if you're not enjoying it at one point, you might, you might have to switch something up. You might have to, like, move team, move position, move something. So just keep doing things that make it enjoyable um, and make it, like, part of your lifestyle. You know, like, doing work and doing going to training shouldn't be stressful. You shouldn't be, fuck, I've got to do this, do this. Just, like, make it fit your lifestyle and like if you want to do less hockey that's fine like you might have to reduce that amount if it's finding it too much um or you might have to do more so it's just making it like fit your lifestyle i'd say is a big a big thing like understanding like who you are as a person and like what works well for you is like really important hmm. yeah that's brilliant advice and so it sounds like you've always had that like real flow throughout yeah. your pathway and it's just you know become more and more part of your life as you progressed yeah um, well, thanks, Adam. Thank you for that interview uh, and great to have you as a mentor on my project. Yeah.